I am letting you guys come in. Getting it back in order. I do not own the rights to this music, but I like for y'all to come and vibe. Hold on now. Never not working. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's make sure we showing love to everybody. It's Wednesday, and I just want to know what. Yeah. Hey. Sorry, was I making faces while I was I was sending the it's kinda loud. I was sending uh, invites out, <laughs> so <laughs> I was I'll probably make your faces. Anyway, this song, Shaka Khan, okay? I'm a huge Shaka Khan fan. Um, what's up? What's up? Hello. Hi, E. I love you. Um, I'm a huge um, Shaka Khan fan. And this song just is speaking to my life right now because it's been a busy week for your girl. <laughs> it's been a real busy week, okay? And I'm just so thankful to actually be in Wednesday, like literally. Um, so what you gonna do for me? You gonna watch this live? You gonna enjoy this time with me? And we gonna do it up. It is. What time is it? Oh, 5.28, 5.30 on the west side. And I am so excited to be continuing another episode live interview of Chronically Real, something I made up in my dreams and in my sleep, and it's real. <laughs> and um, it is to pay homage and respect and love an acknowledgement to women with lupus, men with lupus, um, as well, children with lupus. We are bringing awareness to this ugly little dinosaur that comes into people's lives unexpectedly um, and unapologetically. So with that being said, we have to live back unapologetically apologetically forgive me I don't know what's going on I don't, I don't know what's going on here so um today I you know I've almost freaked out because I thought I wasn't gonna have someone to interview and then the glory of God was like hold on child use social media find someone and I was like you're right so I you know took to Facebook this time and I was like yeah I know too many beautiful women so I was able to pull somebody that I've known for a minute 
and we've you know gone back and forth with our stories personally so that's you know dope but now I really want to be able to introduce her um, and bring her on but first but first you already know I got to enter uh, or update you guys on just kind of you know things that are going on um one I started taking tums like an old person am I the, am I the only uh, 31 year old taking tums please <sighs> tell me that I'm tell me tell me that I'm not please <laughs> um <laughs> I literally just you know don't know how to feel about it but the acid reflex and stuff it makes me feel like I'm over the top but you know I'm taking Tums and um it's a part of lupus and um it's kind of funny because it helps with my heart and I used to look at my grandmother when she was about you know 80 it was like, oh, is this candy? And she's like, no, don't eat that. And I'm like, now I'm eating it. So, <laughs> um, it's, no, it's really, it's it's a life change because I literally had to say, oh my God, I need to go get some Tums. Like, this is, this is serious. And it's good for your heart. So, maybe, you know, young folk take some notes. I don't know. But, <laughs> um, eat. Shout out to my girl Eve. I love you so much and I thank you all the time for your support so much. You are so wonderful. You are so amazing. So, okay, now we are going to get into it. I am going to bring on my girl and hopefully you guys, you know, I do this right, but I'm just, I'm excited. Anyway, I'm going to bring on a, a, a beautiful lupus warrior her name is Cherie she is oh gosh it's kind of weird I'll, we'll have to kind of wing off of each other with the story but we're kind of related it's yeah it's kind of crazy but let me get her on hold on hold on I always do that hey. yeah. Okay, so I don't look as beautiful as you do. So, oh, stop it, stop it. We talked about this. Let me turn my volume up so I can hear you. How are you? I am good. How are you doing? I'm good. You Just, look great. The oh, lashes is getting it, girl. You know, it's like when you're the host, you gotta kind of, you know, like you just gotta in there, but you know how it is. Oh, the baby! He was asleep about three minutes ago. Now he's up. Hi, boo boo. How are you? How precious! Congratulations! You just... Thank you. <laughs> I know. I'm. I how, need to be done. How old is he? He just turned three months on the sixteenth. So you're just now popping them out. Um, yeah, I think I'm done for. Oh. <laughs> I you reached, said, I you think said I've reached, more. I've reached max, maximum capacity. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I do not blame you. I do not blame you one bit. <laughs> one is ten for me, and I'm like, yeah. So. <laughs> well, Layla is going to be 15 this year. I don't know how that happened. So I think, yeah, I don't know. I don't know who let her get that grown. And tomorrow, Jocelyn will be eight. Brianna will be four next month, and then Layla turns 15, so. Okay, but so Layla, okay, she'll be 15, so she's mm -hmm. kind of doing her own thing now, so you don't want no more. You don't want to fill the gap at all? You don't want to, no? You... Uh, 15, 8, 4, and 3 months. I think, I think that's, that's, we got a good range. I think we're okay. good. <laughs> we, got, we got some ranges. <laughs> Okay, so um, if you want to introduce yourself, you know, tell everyone. Yeah, who are so from. my name is Shiree Smith. I am from Arizona. I am currently living in Delaware. I have four kids. I have three girls and a boy. Um, and um, a little bit about me. So I was diagnosed in 2008. Um, and I was also, they found out I had fibromyalgia first. Um, but uh, currently I am getting my PhD in health education and promotion. So I actually have a master's in health and wellness. I am a certified health coach and I'm getting my PhD in health education and promotion. And he is all in this camera. <laughs> Hi, I see you. You can come over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
he's a ham. Um, <laughs> but so me and Brittany are actually cousins by marriage. And yeah. we hadn't seen each other since we were little kids. And we rediscovered, uh, who was it, three, four years ago yeah. on social media? Something like that. On Facebook, yeah. Uh-huh. And um, it's because... How did we rediscover ourselves? Um, so your I know. stepsister, or ha wait, how is it your stepsister or your half sister? Step we were Facebook friends. Yeah, we yeah. were Facebook friends, me and her. And then I ran into you, and I think I sent you a friend request. Um, and it just kind of, we just kind of fell back into it. But yeah, yeah, we haven't seen each other since we were little kids. Yeah. Um, and it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I am your cousin. <laughs> I am your folks. <laughs> yes. Say hey, girl. Say hi. Um, but yeah, so currently um, I am heading into, I just actually, December, made five years that I've been in remission. Um, I actually wow. got control of my gut health, and it's something that I'm writing my dissertation on. Um, I'm a huge advocate, advocate of it, um, and so the gut health to me is extremely important. Um, my program that I created a couple years ago has actually won nine awards in the last two and a half years, and so I've had the privilege of helping people reverse um, some degenerative diseases, their high blood pressure, diabetes, things of that nature. I actually saw one of my clients on here just a little bit ago. I'm not oh, sure if she's still there, but uh, Lashonda, if you're there, say hey. Um, she has Crohn's. Hearts, hearts. <laughs> yeah, she has Crohn's as well as high blood pressure, and she was able to come off her high blood pressure medication following my program. Her Crohn's, um, she wasn't having experiencing flare-ups or anything like that. So I have been blessed to use my testimony to you know, help other people in return. God has truly made me a vessel for other people. So speaking of your testimony, how were you diagnosed? What happened? How did you find out? So my oldest was, oh, Jesus, it was 2008. So she was about to turn three. Uh -huh. And um, there she is. There's LaShonda. She's right there. Um, <laughs> so she, or I had just started dating my now husband and um, I felt sick. So I wasn't feeling that great, and I was in a car accident, and the car accident actually triggered um, fibromyalgia. But during that time, people didn't really know what it was, and so I was going to doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor. Um, I was on all these different medications and in and out of the hospital, but then when someone figured out that I had uh, fibromyalgia, they were like, well, the you know, the medication's not helping. There's got to be something else going on. I had dropped to... I, I want to say I was around 80 or 98 to 100 pounds. Um, and I'm five foot three, so I don't care, you know, unless you're like 16 years old, that's just not a good weight to be. <laughs> um, and I was bruising very easily. I was having seizures. Um, I was blackout at random times. And it just, it was a downward spiral. And my stepfather um, at the time, you know, my mom's been married 1900 times. Well, my stepfather, number three, he actually had lupus and he was like, I think you should go visit my rheumatologist and get yourself tested because wow. no doctor was testing me. Um, I'm going to nurse him. Sorry. So no doctor was testing me and um, no one really knew what was wrong. And right. so um, I was in Maryland at the time and I was just like, okay. So I went and they were like, do you realize that you have a rash on your back? And I was like, no, I, I have bruises everywhere, but I didn't think I had a rash. And they were like, yeah, you have, you know, you have a rash in your back. We're going to get you some tests done and things like that. And that was the downward spiral of me becoming a human lab rat because at that time, nothing was, no medication was working. I was literally functioning off of being high. Um, I could remember driving to take my oldest daughter to school. She lived, or she went to school near my parents' house, which was like 25 minutes away. And I would be driving high as a kite. Um, they would give me random things. And the medications that I was on then are now used for other things. And that uh -huh. kind of fueled me to, I've got to get myself in school and figure out what's wrong with me. I have to, there has to be something that can be done because I'm tired of feeling like a lab rat. I'm tired of feeling like a tester baby because no one can help me. And that's exactly how it is. That's exactly mm -hmm. how it is. You're a guinea pig um, at every turn that, you know, if you say, oh, I have a headache, there's, they, they they will try to take everything about that headache and test it. Turn it into something. Yeah. Oh, we'll try this and do this. And, do, and it's mm -hmm. like, 
I the, the times that I've lived in in Loma Linda Hospital and you know they've been trying things on me or bringing students in to you know test things I mean it's just like it's it's real <laughs> yeah and, and it's hard to explain sometimes to people um because for a while they thought I had drug-induced lupus which is similar to SLE but it's different at the same right. time and so they were like, well, I'm pretty sure it's because of the medications. At one point, I was on 13 prescriptions and three antidepressants. And they're like, the antidepressants are going to help with the fibromyalgia and the flare-ups. And they weren't helping. They were actually making me more dark, more depressed. And being <laughs> in and out of the hospital all the time, yeah, no. I was like, I don't even have control over my own body anymore. Like, only thing I had control over was if I actually peed. <laughs> like, I didn't, I didn't. I did not have control. I was someone else's whatever they needed me to be at that point. Um, I remember, and I have rolling veins, so getting an IV in me is really hard. And so they would stick me numerous times, and I can remember crying because I'm like, it hurts. You yeah. don't understand yeah. how bad it hurts, you know. Some of the medication that I was on, it was painful, you know. Um, I can't even think of what it's called right now. And I was just telling somebody that they need to get off of it. Um, but she has asthma and she needed a steroid. And whenever I take it, like if you touch me, it hurts. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like super painful. And it's just, it's hard to explain to someone what your body goes through unless they've been through it too. They, right. they can't relate. And people are um, always like, oh, just drink more water eat more fruits and vegetables, get more yeah, stuff, yeah. get more sleep. And it's like, it's like if my immune what, system what? was a normal human being's immune system, maybe, but it's... yeah. What do you think I have a cold? Like it doesn't <laughs> work like that. It doesn't, it, it, that's not going to help me. You know, um, someone was like, Oh, what did they tell me that I needed to take? And it was the most ass backwards thing I'd ever heard in my life. And I was like, I don't think that's going to help. Like, <laughs> no, um, some of the stuff, the doctor, the, it got to the point where the doctors were like, well, maybe we should try. And I was like, ooh, no, you didn't sound too confident. <laughs> you didn't there, sound you confident know, it's, at it's, all. It's scary because a lot of doctors don't practice lupus. Mm -mm. You have yes. to go to a rheumatologist. And even then, there's oh, people don't realize that there are over 80 different types of autoimmunes. So just because you go to a rheumatologist, it does not mean that they understand how to deal with lupus. It doesn't mean that they understand how to deal with Crohn's. It doesn't mean they understand. Right. They just know what they know. Yeah. And they know bits and pieces of other things. So no matter where you go, you're going to become someone's tester. You're going to become someone's lab rat unless they have specifically decided to dedicate their world to whatever it is that you have. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I, I oh gosh, I've cried just like when you, when you brought back this crying, I was like, I've cried trying to explain, you know, mm -hmm. this is what it feels like, or this is what I'm going through or whatever it is, even to doctors. And it's like, okay, we're going to keep you here for a couple of more days so we can do the more tests on you. Right. And, and it's like, like I just want to go home. <laughs> like, you're not helping me. Being inside of a hospital, inside of a room, being poked at all the time, random hours of the day, I'm not sleeping, I'm not eating, I can't keep anything down, my face is swollen, my body is ridiculous, and you want me to sit here and you tell me that I just need to stay a little bit long? I want to go home. Yeah. I want to go home. I've like, never said that so many times in my life, um, you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> somewhere I'm like, okay, I think I know what's going on with me more than you guys do. And that's why... Mm -hmm. I created this segment because I'm like, we need to be able to talk about it because there's people out there that don't know what's going on with them or they don't know, you know, certain ways to express themselves. And we need, we that really have gone through it. You know what I mean? I've gone through um, vertigo or just like passing out or for no reason. And they, they can't tell me what's wrong. Oh yeah, I've been through that. So I'm able, you know, to help somebody. So it's like, that's I remember, I um, what is it called? They do the little wax where they put the wax in your hair and they put the little machines up to your head and they try to induce a seizure. They tried that and they were like, okay, you came in here having one and we can't get you to have another one. And I'm like, okay, well maybe we shouldn't just keep doing this. Poking, <laughs> like let's not poke the bear. <laughs> 
just <laughs> not poked there. I think they just want to try stuff. They they get bored. Sometimes they get well, bored. You know what I think it is? I think because they don't understand it, they don't know what it is. It's almost like it's, it's almost like growing something in a petri dish. You want to see what happens. You want to see what you have the power to do, mm -hmm. and they don't realize that that isn't. It's not beneficial to anybody because. If this happens and I do go into a seizure or, you know, when when you were in the hospital for so long, what do you do yeah. well, as a doctor? What do you do when you po poke the bear and that happens and this person is on life support? This yeah. person, this person has this seizure. How do you know that you can bring them back? Can you con can you live with that yeah. on your conscience? Oh, don't, don't do that. that. You've done it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Don't do what that. I remember yes. being in the hospital and them telling me, you know, that I had a year to live. And I'm like, well, what is going on with me? What is wrong with me? Why are you giving me this time frame? And they're like, well, we don't have any other answers for you. No. So you're pushing death upon me when you don't know what's wrong with me. What's wrong with me? I have a yeah. kid at home. Like, what exactly. are you doing? You so, know? so um, speaking of, you were talking about the depression and the, and the medication that you were taking before. Mm -hmm. You eradicated the medication, obviously. So what do you do now to cope with that and this quarantine? You can answer both separately, together, however you want. <laughs> well, I truly focus on gut health. So as long as my gut is in health or in, is in, in high, you know, standards number numerically, you know, through blood tests and things like that, they can tell, you know, how healthy your, your immune system is and stuff. Um, I keep my ass inside. <laughs> I go outside very little because even if, even though I'm in remission, even though, you know, I just had a baby, all these things, my immune is still compromised. Right. You know, I am still labeled as a sick individual. That's basically what we are, you know? Um, and so I have to make sure that I'm doing the things that are necessary to make sure that my health is where it needs to be. And that also involves me taking a break every now and then I'll go out in my neighborhood only has like 34 houses in the development. Um, it's one way in one way out. I'll go out and I'll walk the neighborhood. I have to do these small little things. I have to go to the bathroom sometimes and sit there and sometimes realize it's okay to cry. Mm. It's okay to be frustrated. Um, it's okay to sit there and preach. by myself for a minute and get myself together because being in, I'm an, I'm an introvert, but I'm an extra extrovert at the same time. And so there's parts of me that want to be out and talking to people and interacting, but there's parts of me where I don't want to go outside. Right. I don't want to be in the public. And so I try to just practice being okay with what is going on. Yeah. And it's not easy. It's not easy. You know, um, it is hard and it's hard to convey to somebody why I don't want to talk or why I don't want to answer the phone, you know, and I have two businesses. So that's what I do. I have to talk. I have to answer the phone. I have to engage. But let me tell you, there's sometimes I look at the phone and I'm like, I'll have to call you back. Like, I can't. I can't. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Trust me. It's draining. Trust me. It's draining. My phone rings and I'm like, uh... really? And, and then I'm like, dang, I told you to call me at this time. <laughs> okay but you know for the most part I'm fine and I'm and I'm doing well I'm thriving you know um it's really hard to have kids when you're sick it's hard to have kids when you have lupus and so I've I've had five miscarriages um but I have four beautiful babies you know and oh, this pregnancy I don't mean to cut you off but I mean I'm just so curious because he's he's a new baby and I mean he's a new baby you are here. You're so cute. Say hey, cousin. <laughs> <laughs> he just grunts. Um, so it's each pregnancy has been so different and so weird. With um, Layla, I didn't even know I was pregnant until I was like five months. Um, and it was so smooth, so easy. I gained, I think, 14 pounds. No, 17 pounds. And I it just... It was so simple. No vomiting, no nausea, nothing. It was perfect. Just there and out of there. <laughs> yeah. And, um, oh, he did. He definitely stole the interview. He always does. He, he, <laughs> he does everything he wants. Um, but then, oh, you okay? Um, with Jocelyn, I was on at-home IVs. I couldn't keep anything down. I actually only gained seven pounds. Um, 
I was a hot mess with Jocelyn. And all my kids had been born between 34 to 36 weeks. I can't keep a kid in. Like, it, I, I start contracting and going into preterm labor. I'm in and out of the hospital. Um, wow. With Ariana, I had what, you know, your liver doesn't function properly when you have lupus. You have, your organ starts to shut down. Your kidneys start to shut down. I had kidney problems. Um, but when I'm pregnant, my liver doesn't function properly anymore. So I developed something called ICP of the pregnancy. And it's like chloriostasis or something like that of the pregnancy. But um, my liver, the bile in my liver, it doesn't, my liver no longer recirculates the bile and pushes toxins out. It holds on to them and stores them. So then there's like this incredible itch that I have. Um, it's mm. almost like my body's being attacked by fire ants. It's on my head. It's my scalp, my nose, my eyes, everything. So with Brianna, um, it was like, I was dying. Like, you could not tell me that I was not going to die of itching myself to death. My husband would wake up and he would wake up in the middle of the night and grab my arms because I was scratching myself so bad. I had scratches like I'd been attacked by a cat. Um, and it's normally, it's apparently starts at um, 30, between 30 and 32 weeks. But because I already have organ problems, <laughs> mine started at like 15 or 16 weeks. And the doctors were like, no, you can't have that because you don't develop that that early. Try to sit in an oatmeal bath, um, rub some, you know, Epsom salt, and basically everything except rub some Robitussin on it, basically is what they were touching at that point. Um, and I was like, no, I know my body and there's something going on, there's something wrong. So while waiting for the doctor's results to come back, it was, they were like, oh, it's gonna take a week or two. And I was like, I can't take this anymore. The very next morning, you okay? The very next morning I went to the hospital to triage and they ran tests, and within an hour, they were like, yeah, you definitely have ICP. Your liver enzymes are through the roof. Um, like, if they were supposed to be at, like, a 43, they said mine were double what they were supposed to be. And so um, I went on this medication, which was supposed to calm the itching and things of that nature, but I ended up being in the hospital for six weeks straight. I only went outside one time, okay? Um, and I thought, like, I didn't know how I was going to get through it. Being depressed... Um, and going through those spouts, you know, I also deal with um, um, PTSD from my mother. My mother was mentally and physically abusive. You know, my mom is crazy. And so I dealt with that and the abuse of that, you know, my, one of her husbands molested me. I was raped at 16. Like there's a lot that I dealt with. So being alone most of the time in a room by myself was not good for me. Um, there was a lot of times where I didn't think I would make it out of the hospital. My mother-in-law would come to visit me. My sister-in-law would come to visit me. Um, every day at five o'clock, I can guarantee that my husband was walking through the door with Jocelyn and Layla. And it was just helpful to have those moments. I like relied on five o'clock. Yeah. Like, a drug addict relies on their next shot. I know that feeling, trust me. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't. See somebody <laughs> come through the door in the hospital. Yes, a nurse would come in and they're like, oh, I'm sorry to bother you. I'm like, no, 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 come here. Yes. Let's sit and talk. How was your day? What is the weather like outside? Bye. Is look as good. Like, you, my mental capacity, I felt like was so far off. Like, it wasn't even me anymore. Oh, God. Like, sometimes I would be like, <laughs> Did I really just have this conversation about poop? <laughs> like, <laughs> like the food just, tastes a, just a little different because you just sit there and, and just taste just, all of it. Like it's just <laughs> like I, one of my friends, my girlfriend, she has sent me um, <laughs> an edible arrangements basket, and I'm tell, I think it was done the first day because I was like, "This is new, like fruit, like what fruit." Like, what is wrong with me? I felt like I was losing my mind. So thankfully, my ICP <laughs> was not that bad this time with him. I didn't have to be hospitalized um, for too long. Um, I think the longest I stayed was like a week. But my okay. husband was going to stay with me the whole week. But like, it's just, you become more thankful for the small things. Particularly oh after you're being told, you know, um, you only have this amount of time to live. We don't know what's wrong with you. You know, this, you'll never be cured. You'll never be this. You'll never be that. And it was kind of like each small achievement that I did, I was like in your fucking face. face. Like, can I call the doctor and be like, <laughs> you were wrong. Right? You're a liar. I'll never like, walk again. I'll be a veg. They told me that I'll be a vegetable. They told my mom, you know, oh no, she, she had two heart attacks. Like, yeah, no, she's not coming back. Like, mm -hmm. you get ready for her to 
go and be with the Lord. Like, get your family ready. And now yep. I'm still around here talking mess. I'm, you right. know. So I you remember, <laughs> I remember, you know, on social media, seeing all that. I remember our family talking about, you know, some of them were like, she gonna pull through. And I was like, she's gotta pull through. She's gotta pull through. Like, no, she's she's far too young. She, no, no, she can't. She's gotta pull through. And I think when you're, you've been in a situation that's similar to that, you're like, if I made it, she can make it. Yeah. She'll be fine, yeah. you know? Maybe but then look at that. When we really think about it, like, so many people in our family have lupus. And it's like, what the hell is wrong with our blood? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's going on? No, bro, bro, you know, and I mean, it can, and it could be a genetic thing, and that's the crazy thing. But I'm not even blood related, like that's exactly a like crazy thing. And it's like, what's going on? Yeah, mm -hmm. what's going on? But and, you know, well, and I don't think that people realize that lupus is far more common common than people basically give it credit for. Um, it's one of the more common um autoimmunes out of the 80 that there are yeah um and it's particularly common within african americans and there is something in the dna that does it but it does have a lot to do with gut health which is why i focus on that uh, my dissertation is actually on gut health and autoimmunes and so you want to make sure that you get yourself educated on it and you get do the proper things because there are so many things that you can do to improve your situation when you focus on that aspect. Um, and that there, there was a study that was done last year that said 61% um, of women that have lupus have a higher, um, what the heck is the, um, it's a micro flora that is in a bac bacteria that's in our guts and okay. it's so much higher than anyone else's when we have lupus. And that's actually one of the things that they test for outside of the blood, but the doctors don't tell you that. Yeah. It was a case study that was done last year, wow. came out in February on, on um, I think it was 17 women. Wow. So um, there's a lot that goes into it. There's, there's, there's things that we could do in our day-to-day -day lives that would definitely help improve the day-to-day -day, you know, functions and activities. But a lot of it is, being able to stand up for yourself, being able to say no thank you, being able to say, look a doctor in the face and say, you know what, you're wrong. Something yeah. is wrong with or me. Or I'm not doing this. <laughs> I need help. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it, it's, okay. Yeah. it's okay to tell your doctor, you know what, you're a great doctor. I'm not taking <laughs> anything away from you. But unfortunately, you're not the doctor to help me with this situation. Yeah. Um, and I think that as not even just women, not even black women, but as someone with an autoimmune, we don't stand up for ourselves because we're scared. Because we honestly don't know. And we assume that someone that's gone to school and paid thousands and thousands of dollars. And that is, is why I have, to give, I have to give complete kudos to your cousin, my sister, Tisha, because... She has taken, I mean, her entire life and dedicated it to the medical field. But, mm -hmm. you know, sit, I mean, sitting with me, she would go with me to the hospital if I was going to the emergency or to the doctor, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever. And it's like the me not knowing I'm not going to school to be a doctor or anything in whatever so you know that's not my calling so you know it's like to have her um there to educate me and to keep me understanding and keep my space calm because of course when you think what is this i don't understand this what is going on and the doctors yeah they're not going to spend time and sit with you and talk to you and tell you in layman's terms or let me let me explain it to you like this so it's a blessing to be able to have access to that on a regular basis you know and then also doing your own research because you when you live with it every day you're like wait a minute what does this mean why is this happening or you know you go through your medications like why am i taking this and why does this have this in it and whatever it is so it's but like doctors can't tell you why you're taking anything most of the time they'll tell you oh it's for this and i'm like really because that's not what it's advertised for in the commercial <laughs> i had i had no Actually. problem telling doctors that and i would be like really because i just saw that it's on the commercial and it's for this this and this and you're telling me that i can take it for this and i'm not digging the side effects you know, I guess I, I can't, you can't do all of these things. And so it's funny because me and my cousin Renee, you know, your mom's best friend, yes. she 
we would have conversations where I'd be like, okay, this is what's wrong with me. What do you think this is? Like, <laughs> tell me what you think this is because the doctors don't know. And so, um, oh, Jesus, about a year and a half ago, I was having really bad lung problems and I couldn't really breathe. Um, it was really hard for me to breathe. I would stand up and my oxygen levels were dropping to 90%, 80%, things like that. And I was freaking out. Um, in and out of the hospital, they were doing, you know, the CAT scans, the chest x-rays and stuff, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong. Mm -hmm. And having had asthma when I was younger, they kept telling me, oh, it's asthma. This is not asthma. asthma. Something <laughs> is wrong. And I'm so, sorry. It's just funny because they just, they just throw it out there. Like, maybe if she catches yeah. it, well... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Someone was like, well, maybe you just have fluid in your lungs or maybe it's just um, an ex extra cold. And I was like, I don't have a cold. Like, I don't have a cold. My mother-in-law was watching the kids. My husband was sitting with me in the hospital and I was like, somebody needs to tell them that they don't know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> like, you know, Seriously. and so we went through three months. Girl, they had me on a treadmill with stuff connected to my heart, trying to run like I'm an old person. I was literally in a, a um, uh, visiting a heart doctor, and I was the youngest person there. Everybody else was like triple my age. And so I'm sitting up there, and I'm like, I'm going to die. Like, they don't know what's wrong with me. My heart is going to burst. Like, I can't breathe. Like, what is going on with me? And like, um, it's funny because around that time we started to remove the toxins from our environment. I still to this day have no idea what was wrong with me. They did a uh, blood testing. Um, what's the blood test that they do where they pull the blood from you, but they come directly out of like almost your bones instead of like an, um, your, um, like a marrow like, test, like a, from uh, your marrow. Yes. And so it was just, that was one of the most painful things I think I've ever did. I remember almost wanting to punch the lady in the face and, and they still, they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. They could not figure it out. And so um, we started removing the, and the toxins from our home and we haven't had a problem since. Have not had a problem since. We got rid of bleach, Tide, Fabuloso, Windex, duck, all of it, all of it. Wow. And I have not had a problem since. And I still have inhalers upstairs that they swore were gonna be the answer to my prayers. Right. You know? Wow, wow. What so is there, um, is there anything, I don't want to hold you, you know, I want you to take care of the baby and everything, but we got a few questions and I want yes. to know, um, is there anything that you're working on? You're in school, so like, you're going to be done. <laughs> What's going um, on? I just started. I just started my second year, so um, I'm trying to prep to get my stuff together so I can have my dissertation ready. That's like 300 pages, and I'm just like overwhelmed already at the thought of it. Um, but outside of that, I'm just working my businesses. I'm helping people, you know, with their with their own health situations. Hey, Leslie, I see you. I saw a couple of people I know that have jumped on. It's nice to see you guys. <laughs> Um, hey, Lola, I know you too. How how you doing? Um, <laughs> but it's just, it's nice sometimes to help people. I think it calms my brain. Um, because if I sit in solitude for too long, I start to wander. <laughs> and, you know, and I'm always afraid. Like in the beginning, you know, all this happened. The kids are in school and I'm like, my kids can't go back to school. If one of them gets sick, they're going to bring it home. I'm going to get sick. I just had a baby. He's going to get sick. Like all these things are freaking me out in my head. And it's like, yes. I don't know how to speak out loud because I don't want people to think I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, because you start telling people what you're going through or what you've been through and they start to look at you funny. And it's like, yeah, it's, not, it's not in the water. They start walking away, honestly. <laughs> Yes, it's not in the water. You don't understand. You're not going to catch it. Oh, and he just threw up all over me. Sorry, y'all. Um, this is, <laughs> And this is chronically real. <laughs> this is real life. This is okay. real life. It's <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got all these people watching you throw up on mama. And you just stole the show and threw up and you're still cute. I can't it's even. still cute. I don't even oh. care. I don't even. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, I have two shirts on, so let me take one off and clean this throw up up. Okay. But um, yeah, you know, and it's it's hard sometimes to to sleep at night knowing that at any point in time it could all be taken away from you. You know, you don't know what's gonna cause you to be sick. 
Hold on, baby boy. Mama's trying to fix her shirt. You don't know, you know, by the grace of God, I'm, I'm healing. I'm not healed, you know? And so all it takes is one trip to the grocery store and someone to be sick, and then I'm sick. You know, all it takes is an outside, quote unquote, has opened back up here in Delaware, but I'm not going out all the time. My kids aren't going to school. My kids, there was no way in hell I was sending my kids back to school because I was like, you know what? These kids don't even wash their hands after they dig in their nose or they they go to the bathroom. You really think that I'm going to let my kids go back to school right? with these sick individuals like who don't, oh, I see your bedroom. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> With these sick individuals who don't know how to wash their hands and have all these germs on a regular, I'm to fix that. like it's we just it's, stuff. it's okay, <laughs> um, you know. And it's just so much that I think that people don't take into account that when you're when you have an autoimmune, you have one forever. You are forever walking in fear. You are right. forever walking in your walking testimony to be able to walk, to be able to live, to be able to speak, to be able to be vocal about it. Yeah. But you're always living in that fear of what if, yeah. what if, what's that one thing that's going to rock my soul? Right. What's that one thing that's going to make me become, end up in the hospital again and be a human lab rat. And for me, I'm like, you know, what, what do I leave my kids? Mm -hmm. What if something happens to me? You know, who's going to take care of them? I have four kids. That's a lot. And I'm thankful because there's a lot of people that can't have one kid. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And especially in this, and with this illness and I mean, well, almost everybody I know have been able to successfully have children, which is a blessing, but. Right. Not and they're working away with one baby because they can't have another one or it was so hell with that one baby. They're like, no, I don't think I want to put my body through body that. Through. And that's, then that is actually, that's not so much me, but you know, I thought I would love to have a, a little girl one day, but in true, in all of I'm not, yeah, I'll take one of yours. <laughs> you want the redhead or the sassy one? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not in, I'm not in a, I'm not, it's not detriment to me. You know, I'm like, I, I have my beautiful boy. I feel like my, you know, God bless me with Caleb and I'm cool, you know, and it's He's like, your boy, you, yeah. you don't. It, you you count your blessings and you become thankful for everything that's around you yeah. but can you appreciate things just a little bit more you know I find myself sometimes I'll listen to things that my husband says and I'm like why is he being a negative Nancy doesn't he know that we're living that we're good that we're you know we're healthy and so I try to tell him you know just think, see the positive in everything just stop yeah. just because it bothers me because I I that used to be me, you know, and yeah. I used to live it. And I know that when I'm sick, it scares the hell out of him because he lived through that with me. There was a point yeah. where he, I remember two distinct incidents. Um, one was I was on medications and <laughs> I was washing and drying the same clothes. So there was two loads of laundry. I would put a load in the wash and wash it. The load I would take out of the wash, I would dry it. And I was re recycling through the two same two loads. And I remember him grabbing me at like three in the morning and saying, what the hell is wrong with you? Go to bed. <laughs> and I was like, I remember thinking like, what is wrong with you? I'm just washing clothes. Like, <laughs> like you did that already. Like, what <laughs> you, you, well, you've been there, done that. They are the cleanest clothes in all the land. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, and then I remember... One time I couldn't move. I woke up in bed and I couldn't move. I couldn't move my body. I couldn't feel below my waist. Uh -huh. And I think it was one of the most scariest moments of my life. I remember I couldn't really breathe or talk. And I remember reaching for him and tapping him, like trying to wake him up. And he turned on the light and he looked at me and he was like, what's wrong? And I was like, I don't have a voice. I can't, like, I was like gasping for air trying to tell him I can't talk. Yeah. And he tried to move my legs and he couldn't move my legs. And he was like, it was like trying to break a tree trunk is what he, the way he described it. Like there was no other way that he could describe it was like trying to move me was like trying to break a tree trunk in half. And I think at that point he was fearful. Wow. Because how, how do you explain that to a doctor? And what does a doctor tell you is wrong with you? They say, I don't know. Yeah. And the other, like, 
they probably go in the private room and it's like, oh my God, what do, what do I say? Yes. Like, that's what do I say to her? They would give me medications that were for cancer patients, but I couldn't, still couldn't keep anything down. Um, I, I, everything would come back up, everything. And it didn't matter what form it was, liquid, whether, and you know, people were like, oh, you know, if you have potatoes or starches, it's supposed to hold everything. That, no, it would come up like water. Like I was just so sick to the core. And I think a part of me became even more fearful because when I started dating him, I had just got sick. Like we started dating in April That's and hard. I got sick. I was showing symptoms in March, but I started being hospitalized at the end of April, right? What's even worse is the girlfriend that he had before me died of lupus. Girl. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> um, glory to God. Okay. And shout out to cousin-in-law because. <laughs> right. Wow. Yes. And like, I remember thinking, I'm just, I'm going to be like her. And I don't know who's going to take care of my daughter. Like, I'm going to leave her abandoned. Like, it's I, a, I just. It's, fear. it's an everyday <laughs> fear because. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so, like, I just, whomever on here and whoever's listening to the sound of our voices, just know that you're here for a reason, okay? God is putting you through something, and you have to go through your test to get to a testimony, no matter what it is, no matter how hard it may seem. So everything hard. will make sense and become full circle, because there is a purpose for you to be able to wake up another single day, okay? Yes. There are people that are far more deserving than me, people that are far more deserving than Brittany that did not get the chance to wake up today, okay? Um, just know that no matter what you're going through, as hard as it may seem, you will be okay. You may be sick, you may struggle, you may, you may not understand but keep fighting every single day. Oh, every gosh. single day, keep trying to live. Every single day, find something that you're thankful for. Create a gratitude book and write in there five things that you're grateful for before you close your eyes. In yes. the morning, when you can't get out of bed, because if you have lupus, you don't have the energy. You don't have the mental capacity to want to get out of bed sometimes. Like it just doesn't, it sounds foreign to you. Read what you're grateful for. And I'm telling you, as cliche as it sounds, walk to the bathroom, get in the shower, even if you're sitting on the floor, and just say thank you over and over again. Say thank yes. you as you're lathering your body. Because the more you start to say thank you, even though there's nothing really that you can think of other than the things that you went to bed that you were grateful for the night before, the more you say thank you, the more it starts to become real that you have something to be thankful <laughs> for. Yes. I'm telling you, it's a mind trick, but it works so good. Uh, there are times so where even now I stand in the shower and I'm like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, after a while, I'm smiling through tears and I'm like, it's a good damn day. It is a good damn day. It's going to be a good damn day. It's going it to has be. be. Exactly. You have to because I trust me, there, there are times where I'm like, I want to do what? I want to, I do not want to <laughs> walk out of this room. No. No. And you can't, when you have kids, you can't just sit in there all day and do nothing. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't, you know, you find a reason to get out of bed, find a reason to be thankful. Even every single step you take, find a reason to be thankful for that step. Find a reason to be thankful that you have water to drink, that you have a meal to eat that you don't want to cook. Okay. Be thankful for it because feet might be swollen, you know, <laughs> when you get ready. Like, and that's the whole thing. It's like, for us, is there? there's a lot more factors in it, you know, for us when it comes to certain oh. things. I love, mm -hmm. this whole quarantine has made cooking my hobby even more so <laughs> than it was before. And I'm just looking at stuff to cook that I'm like, really bringing, you really going? Oh, yeah, girl. You know, you're going to make a, a giant I, mozzarella stick? Like, are you really? Like, I you know? love cooking. <laughs> and we just bought a five-in-one ninja. And girl, I'm cooking everything in that thing. Like, <laughs> I just made some salmon tonight with some roasted potato, some red uh, sweet potatoes, and um, not red sweet potatoes with uh, white and uh, regular sweet potatoes, and it was bomb. Mm. 
and it took me it took me longer to cut the sweet potatoes than it did to cook the whole meal oh, i'm telling yeah. you mm -hmm. <laughs> it took about 13 minutes to cook the whole meal oh yeah so you know you just find a reason to be thankful if you yeah. are on this and you need somebody to hold you accountable message me message Brittany. follow yeah, us see. and that's what we're sure. here for you're not alone no. don't feel like you're alone don't think that you have to do it alone you oh, know gosh. and the more you trick your brain with gratitude the more you find that you have to be thankful for hey naro how you doing baby girl thank <laughs> you for jumping on she sucks at timetable or not timetables uh time zones like i do she thought oh, it was at 5 30 eastern time i think <laughs> okay <yeah. laughs> well i, I mean forget me I that is you're so right about that and I mean you you answered my next question which was freaking awesome because I was like you know what do you want people to know about lupus but the encouragement and all that kind of stuff is so necessary because mm -hmm. I mean I'm so thankful for my unit because my family they came through for me like this girl is not about to go crazy you know my mom was calling folks left and right RIP mommy you know it was like look something is going on I need y'all to come through you know and it was like so that support your support system is so necessary and I had it and to get me back to this point so it's like it's so necessary and you know everything that you've been through recently God kept your mother strong for you and before don't get me started he, before he took <laughs> I was, I was telling cousin Renee this before he let your mama go get gain her wings he made sure that you were strong enough to handle it Brittany there is nothing in this world that you cannot overcome anymore you lost your stepfather you lost your mom you almost lost yourself but you're here and Caleb needs you don't, don't need to me sorry <laughs> it's just it's, you've been through a lot yeah, you've been through a lot, but you were looking at me, and you're alive. You know, we're here. there are people yeah. that counted you out. Oh, I know. And you're alive. <laughs> hey, folks. You know, I know, <laughs> I know. But yes, girl, I do not want to hold you. Oh my gosh, this baby. I just wanted. Yeah, I gotta go. The girls tucked in the bed. Right. <laughs> I want to see all the you. Babies. I want to see come you. Us. Oh my gosh. So us, I'm going to let you go. I really okay. thank you so much for letting me interview you and talk. And this wasn't even an interview. We was having a talk. Anytime. Anytime. <laughs> Anytime. I'm so always here. Yes. Tell the people um, how they can keep up with you and get involved, you know. Um, so you can follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm also on Facebook. Same name. Um, and my website is shiresmith.com. Um, just reach out on Instagram. There is a link in my bio if you need to connect with me as well. Um, I have no problem giving you my number. Just slide in my inbox and let me know that you need me. Um, and I'm always here. I'm always available. It may take me a minute to get back to you, but I am here. Um, and just know that you don't have to do it alone. You have a tribe that will support you. And I don't have to know you to support you. I don't have to know you to pray for you. I don't have to know you to let you know that you will be okay. I'm here. So anything you need, me and little Andrew got you, right? Yes. Can you say hi? Hey, hi. Hey, hi, beautiful ladies and gentlemen out there. I am the new host of Chronically Real. <laughs> I will be here next week. <laughs> the nonverbal host. <laughs> <laughs> that wants to look and say, what are y'all doing? <laughs> but my darling, I truly appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing no your testimony and your beautiful baby and just you. taking your time out um, and showing us how real it is, you know, being a mother with lupus and a wife and just a go getter. You know, and a believer and I can go on and on and oh, on. thank you, you so are much. You're so awesome. And I'm, I'm proud so of thankful you. you. Your family, your family. I am proud of you and I am so, grateful for you and all that you're you. doing. I hope that you realize what you're doing. It's it's important and it's necessary and you're helping somebody. So just know that the word necessary. You both are and I appreciate it. You're welcome. I, I'm just happy I don't listen to those other voices. I just listen to the Lord, like, just go do it. Okay. 
I'm gonna fall on my face. All right, Lord. That's cool. all. <laughs> you know. So that's all you can do. Yes, but my love, enjoy your evening, and thank you so much for your thank time. You. So I'll see you no soon, problem. and we're out. Thanks, guys, for Good watching. Night.